This was not at all how I had envisioned my golden years. I slowly looked around the dining room of the Wagon Wheel Acres. All old men, real old people. The most depressing part was that I was one of them. I was only 62 and I didn't feel that old. In fact, I lied. That's not the depressing part. I'm sitting at a table for four with people I don't know. Across from me is my wife LaRue, who is sitting at another table with her lover. Everyone in the retirement complex was aware of the situation, which made it even worse. I was very careful when choosing Wagon Wheel Acres. They had the option of continuing care, which was nice, and also didn't require a large investment. The monthly fee for both of us was over $3,000, but it gave us peace of mind and no fuss. Of course, I couldn't imagine Jackson Millhouse ever showing up. I lost my appetite again as I watched my wife chatting with Jackson. I've spent 40 years wooing her, and he'll be able to enjoy her in her old age. I mean that in every sense of the word. It had been two weeks since LaRue had informed me that she had been intimate with Jackson and that she was going to continue. That same day, she had moved all of her clothes and personal belongings into his studio apartment. Our apartment had a real bedroom, but it didn't have Jackson in it. I didn't argue with her. I never argued with her. What does that mean? Over the years, I'd realized it was much easier to go along with what she wanted. It was better than arguing. I put my lunch aside and went back to my apartment. The thought of me paying for her to be here and Jackson Millhouse reaping all the benefits annoyed me. Over the years, I had done everything I could to keep my wife happy sexually, but nothing seemed to work. Turns out Jackson knew something I didn't. Attached to the mirror above the sink in my bathroom was a business card that one of the most active bachelors had given me. I grabbed a cold beer and plopped into my ten-year-old recliner chair, the only piece of furniture in the apartment that wasn't new. I took two large sips of beer and stared at the gold card in front of me. Berkshire Escort Services by the hour and day. It was ridiculous. What was a 62-year-old man going to do with an escort all day? Heck, I seriously doubted I could work my money off in an hour. I finished my beer and reached for my phone. I had no idea what I was going to say or what I was going to do. I guess I just wanted to talk to someone. Berkshire Escorts. It's Darlene's. Well, I got to this point and then froze. My silence was quickly noticed. Berkshire Escorts. Hello, are you here? Uh, hi. Yeah, I'm here. I think it was pretty obvious I was a little nervous. My name is Darlene. I assume you have a question you'd like me to answer? How did you know that? Most people who call have questions. So you're not psychic. Could you tell me your name, please? Uh, Carson. My name is Carson. Do you have to know that? Not really, but it'll make it easier for me to talk to you. My friend Dippy gave me your card. Oh, yeah. Mr. Burke. You live at Wagon Wheel Acres, too? Yes, is that a problem? Don't be silly. Why would it be a problem? Dippy told me you were able to find him a couple of companions and that he was quite happy. Well, that's very nice of him. I'll give him a discount next week. I didn't know what to say, so there was a slight pause in the conversation. Carson? Carson? Are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I just don't know what to say or what to ask you. Why don't I help you out a little? How long do you need company for? Well, I guess about an hour or two. I just want to have dinner with someone, maybe a nice restaurant. I think an hour or two would be enough. Is that all you want? I'm not interested in sex, if that's what you mean. All I want is a pleasant companion for a few hours. It was a frustrating situation for me, since LaRue was the only woman I'd ever been with. Carson, our escort costs $300 an hour. That's a lot of money just to take a young lady out to dinner with you. Yes, I know. When you say young lady, what age are you talking about? Well, most of our escorts are under 30. I can't do that. I find women under 50 a little annoying. I was hoping for an older lady. Someone mature, but classy. Do you have any suggestions? Earned I'm afraid there aren't many women in that age group working as escorts. I could look you up if you'd like. Does that mean it would cost me more like $300 an hour or less? I'm not sure at this point. I have your phone number and my caller ID. I will check and call you back in about an hour. Is that okay with you? 
It's fine. If you can, could you arrange it tonight, about seven o'clock? Where were you planning on taking the lady? I thought the Black Angus was the best place in town. Does that sound tempting enough? It'll have to do, Carson. Give me an hour. I felt a little better when I hung up. LaRue and Jackson were going to have chicken parmesan cutlets for dinner, and I would have preferred filet mignon. I spent the next hour going through my closet like a schoolboy. I chose a dark blue blazer, a gray turtleneck, and brown khaki pants. I wasn't sure if Darlene would be able to find any, but it was worth it. I picked up the phone after the third ringtone. I could have done it faster, but I didn't want to seem overly anxious. It's Carson. Carson, it's Darlene. I have good news. Your date will be waiting for you in front of the Sheraton at seven o'clock. She'll be wearing a green hunter dress. Is that okay with you? Sounds great. I might be a little early, but I don't want to seem too excited. How old is she? Look, Carson, you don't want to know. You should never ask a woman her age, but your date today is 58. I hope you like her. Any other questions? Just one. How do I pay for this? Cash, bring cash. The next few hours seemed to fly by. I had to admit, even thinking about the evening ahead was exciting. It was only dinner, but it was still romantic. I needed this. Wagon Wheel Acres was full of women who would make great dinner companions, but the thought of sleeping with one of them would make me feel like a slob. If I did that, it would be tantamount to saying I condoned what my wife was doing with Jackson. I didn't accept that she and Jackson were together, but I couldn't figure out how to get out of the predicament and still hold my head high. Of course, nothing could be much worse than my current situation. I might as well enjoy my life while working on a solution. I left the house early so I had time to take my car to the car wash. It wasn't necessary, but it was a special evening. It would have been nice to get a more impressive set of wheels, but I had to make do with what I had. I ended up in the parking lot of the Sheraton Hotel, watching the entrance. I didn't want to stop before my date got out, but I didn't want to keep her waiting either. Damn it, I wish I had more experience in this area. I felt like a teenager. She was definitely a classy lady. The dress sat well on her but didn't make her look cheap. No one would have mistaken her for a paid prostitute. For her 58 years, she looked damn good. For a moment, I thought that maybe, just maybe, I should have tried the whole program. No. Talking was worthless. There was no way I could ever pull this off. Dinner, that's all. That was all I was capable of tonight. I drove cautiously up to the entrance, parked, and walked around to open the door for her. Carson, I presume? Yes, ma'am, and what should I call you? Darlene Carson. Just call me Darlene. A sly smile appeared on her face as she noticed the expression on my face. She was still smiling when I walked around the car and back into the driver's seat. I don't understand. I thought you were going to get me a chaperone. I did, but I called Dippy and talked to him for a while. I decided I was the best choice for this evening. Do you do this on a regular basis? She laughed a little. No, in fact, this is the first time in six years that I've been out with a gentleman. Did I look that desperate? No, silly, you're not desperate, but... Dippy said you could use a little cheering up. Besides, it's been a long time since I've had a nice evening. Now enough work talk, can I have the lobster? Darlene didn't order lobster, but instead ordered a small filet. The evening went exactly as I expected. After dinner, we sat and talked for several hours until the waiters politely asked us to leave. She had never been married and had started in the escort business when she was still in college. A few years later, she was already running her own business and seemed very proud of herself because she was good at what she did. I drove back to the Sheraton Hotel to drop her off, but instead she gave me a local address. It was a small brick house in a very upscale neighborhood. It was odd because most of the houses around it were quite large. There was a for sale sign hanging in the middle of the yard. I walked her to the front door, not knowing what to expect next. Would she invite me in? Should I kiss her? Should I just shake her hand? She solved my dilemma with one of her sweet smiles. I hope your evening went exactly the way you wanted it to, Carson. I nodded as she extended her hand to me. That'll be $300, please. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. But I had to, and now I was smiling. I plucked three bills from the small pack of $100 bills I'd brought with me and held them out to her. I don't understand. 
We'd been together for almost four hours? Yes, but that was my choice, not yours. I'll only charge you for the first hour. Is that okay? Sure, it was worth twice as much. I watched as she folded three bills and stuffed them into her bra like in the movies. I think she did it on purpose, just to shock me. Darlene, can we do it again? Are you sure? There was a certain seriousness in her question that distracted me a little. I'm sure. I had a wonderful evening. I'd do it every night if I could afford it. She laughed again. Carson, why don't you come over to my place tomorrow night about six o'clock? I'll cook us something. I'd love to. I turned to leave, but stopped. How much is this going to cost me? $300, silly. It's always $300. At that moment, she took my hand, leaned forward, and kissed me. I wasn't expecting this, and it was even more exciting. I noticed a slight reaction in my groin area. Maybe I should ask Dippy to get me some blue pills. I got the chance the next morning at breakfast. I was watching LaRue and Jackson sitting at the other end of the dining room when Dippy pulled up a chair and more or less squeezed his way over to our table. He'd already eaten, but he still had a cup of coffee in his hand. Carson, old boy, how was your evening? Of course, the other three at the table had no idea what he was talking about. Better than expected. He noticed I was smiling. Much better than expected. I pushed my plate away, grabbed a cup, and we walked over to the coffee pot. Is that all you're going to tell me? Dippy, we have nothing more to talk about. We've had dinner, and that's it. Nothing more. I didn't sleep with her. Well, what the hell did you pay her for? I didn't have an answer that would satisfy him, so I didn't say anything. We made ourselves comfortable in the living room with two fresh cups of coffee. Dippy, could you get me some pills? Sure. No problem for $20 a pop. Mildred can take care of you. Mildred? You mean the old lady in the wheelchair? Yeah. Her rent ran out a few years ago. I don't know where she gets her pills, but she has a steady supply, and she's been able to stay here by selling them. Isn't Free Enterprise great? So, Carson, who did she set you up with? I think I already know them all. Just the way he said it, I realized he'd never been with Darlene. I believed her when she said she hadn't had a client in six years. In fact, I think I believed almost everything she told me. Either she was being honest with me or she was a magnificent liar. On the other hand, the ability to lie convincingly was a great asset for a woman of her profession. I think her name was Greta. She had an accent, something like Slavic or Russian. I didn't know why I didn't just tell him the truth. As we sat and chatted, LaRue and Jackson walked by, still immersed in their own private little world. My wife didn't even glance in my direction or notice my presence. No one would have ever guessed that I was married to this woman. I heard Dippy chuckle softly, for which I received an elbow under the ribs. Dinner with Darlene was memorable. She wasn't a gourmet cook, but she cooked well. Dippy called that afternoon and insisted she set him up with Greta. She figured out pretty quickly what the hell was going on and set him up with one of her new girlfriends. She was an aspiring actress and was looking forward to trying her hand at playing Dr. Zhivago in Poor Dippy. I think Darlene appreciated the fact that I didn't give Dippy her name. The evening ended too soon and I got another kiss as I left, right after giving her another $300. The next night we went out to eat sushi. I knew what I liked to order, but she knew how to do it in Japanese. She was an amazing woman and I wanted to spend as much time with her as possible. The only problem was that I was married and didn't know how long I could pay off the damn $300. We always spent more than an hour together but it always cost the same. I couldn't understand it, and I wasn't going to ask. The situation escalated that weekend when my daughter Sylvia came to visit me. She lived about an hour away, but only came three or four times a year. This visit was a little different from the previous ones. I saw Sylvia when she arrived. She had, as usual, left her husband Barry and two children at home. Instead of going to our apartment, which was now mine, Sylvia went straight to the apartment where Jackson and her mother were staying. She stayed with them for over two hours. They all left the apartment and wandered around the compound for another hour or so, just talking and laughing. Finally, I noticed that my daughter looked at her watch and said something to her mother before walking back into the main building of the complex. I had no desire to talk to her at this point, so I slipped out of the back of the building. 
Five minutes later, I watched her car pull out of the parking lot, heading back to her happy home. I was sad because Sylvia and I had always been close. At least that's what I thought. LaRue and Jackson were still sitting by the carp pond like a pair of lovebirds. I spent that night with Darlene. I was pleased that she was waiting for me to make the first move, and I was thrilled that she readily accepted my advances. I was also pleased that I had given a hundred bucks to Mildred. Then I got the bad news. Darlene had sold her house. She also sold her business to some longtime young girls who had saved up to buy her out. She actually had a master's degree in business administration, and with it, the ability to manipulate investments to maximize returns. She was not only wealthy, but incredibly wealthy. Within the last year, she had a completely renovated house that she had purchased in Merida, Mexico. Now the house was finished and she was ready to move in. By then, I knew her well enough to realize that she would not approach me. I had no idea what I was going to do, but I had to ask. Darlene, is there any way I can come with you? She responded not with words, but with a smile and a hug. This woman knew many men, and I was at a complete loss as to how I was the one she chose to stay with. I was flattered, of course, but still confused. I decided not to question her motives, but to accept them. Carson, I think we can work things out if you want to. I suppose I'll have to get a divorce? Oh, no way. You'd lose half of everything you have. Just let me take care of everything for you. We're leaving in ten days. Are you sure you want to do that? Oh, yeah, I'm sure. By the way, where the hell is Merida? I was busy next week. Fortunately, my passport was in order. Darlene drew up the paperwork so I could resell my apartment at Wagon Wheel Acres. It wasn't a lot of money, but I got back 80% of the original purchase price. Darlene opened a bank account for me with Citibank, which operates in Merida under the name Banamex. She insisted that I would have enough money to live comfortably, especially since I wouldn't have to pay rent or utilities. The money from the sale of my apartment was used to open an account. Then the money from my current and savings accounts was transferred. My retirement package included an annuity account that was open to protect my assets. Fortunately, Darlene had people who were more than willing to buy an annuity for a fixed amount. I had seen commercials on TV where people would yell, This is my money and I want it now. And I always wondered if that was true. I ended up getting 82% of the amount in the account. I didn't get any more monthly payments, but I did end up with a decent amount of cash. I transferred almost $800,000 into my Citibank account. I had no problem selling the Honda. I put that money in my pocket for out-of-pocket expenses. By then, Darlene had opened an account for me at Banamex in Merida. I could transfer money from the account to Citibank at any time, but I needed a Banamex account so I could automatically receive my Social Security check. A trip to the local social security office made it easier, but still caused a lot of hassle. The last few days before I left, I spent all my time at Darlene's house. Dippy told me that LaRue never noticed my absence. Of course not. I gave Dippy my HDTV. I was no longer making payments to Wagon Wheel Acres. Of course, this also meant that LaRue would not receive any money. From now on, Jackson Millhouse would be paying for his girlfriend. It's hard to describe what the houses in Merida look like. It looks more like a village in Spain or Italy. The houses are all in pastel colors and tightly pressed together. They are quite simple and unpretentious on the outside, but extremely sophisticated on the inside. In no time at all, Darlene and I were settled into our new home. I felt like a gigolo because she was paying all the expenses. I tried to compensate by buying her little gifts until she firmly told me to stop. The world was right. Everything was fine, and then one day, six months later, Sylvia showed up. Darlene invited my daughter into her home, and then, after apologizing, left for the market. I was left alone with my only child, who I had no desire to talk to in the slightest. Daddy, what the hell are you doing here? You have to come home. I couldn't find anything to say to such a start. I sat down and gestured for her to do the same. Can you be more specific? De Sylvia looked a little upset, and we hadn't even started yet. You left without saying anything to anyone, and you took everything with you. Yeah, so what? What about your wife? What about her? I asked her to come with me, and she said she wanted to stay with Jackson. I lied, but Sylvia didn't know that. She had no way of proving or disproving what I said. 
But you took everything. All the cash and the retirement account. What was she supposed to do now? She seemed to be doing fine when I left. In fact, she wanted nothing to do with me. Why are you here now? You can't just leave her. She's your wife. The last time you came to Wagon Wheel Acres before I left, you spent three hours with Jackson and your mother and no time at all with me. Why not? I tried to find you, but you weren't at your apartment. You tried to find me three hours later. What was I? An afterthought? Some kind of commitment? Don't be so dramatic. Mom was happy with Jackson. She wanted me to get to know him better. That's fine. Let him take care of her. You know she slept with him in his apartment, of course. Yeah, she said you didn't want to share a bed with her anymore. Did you really believe that? What do you want, Sylvia? Why did you go to all this trouble to find me and then come here? I'm not going back. I'm not going to let her rub my infidelity in my face. It was humiliating. And if you don't understand that, you need help. Barry and I can no longer afford to pay for her to stay at Wagon Wheel Acres. Her social security doesn't cover half of her expenses, and they won't let her go without full pay. What about old Jackson? I thought he'd be helping her. Jackson Millhouse was transferred to an Alzheimer's unit three months ago. Rules don't allow his mother to stay in the room with him, and we can't afford to keep her in the ward alone. Wait, wait. Are you saying you want me to give her money so she can continue to live at Wagon Wheel Acres and be near her lover? Daddy. She's comfortable there. She wants to stay there because it's a safe and familiar place. Bullshit. She wants to stay there to be near him, even though he probably doesn't know who the hell she is anymore. You're crazy if you think I'm going to let her use me for something like that. You're being unfair. Why don't you let her live with you? She can babysit you and all that. You have a big enough house. We offered. She turned us down. She wants to stay at Wagon Wheel Acres. I slowly got up from my chair and headed into the hallway. Taking my hat off the rack by the door, I looked at my daughter. She had traveled over 2,000 kilometers for nothing. Her mother had given me horns, and now my daughter was trying to make me feel guilty for not accepting the humiliation. I'm going to the market. When you leave, close the door. I knew exactly where I could find Darlene. I never found out what motivated Lara to do what she did. I don't care about that anymore. I'm happy in my mud hut.